In this video, I'm going to cover conditional orders on the Femix Exchange. I'll do a few examples in here as to where these conditional orders could be useful, and I'll show you how to place them as well. If any of you are brand new to Femix, feel free to check out my Femix step-by-step -step beginners tutorial, and I'll leave a link for that video in the description, as well as in the pinned comment section down below. Also, feel free to drop by my YouTube channel and visit my Femix tutorial playlist, where I cover a variety of topics there too. Let's get into the video. I shall show you a few different ways that you could potentially use a conditional order. But first of all, to place the conditional order, come up over here to the top left hand side in your order panel and click where it says conditional. And you'll see that there's two options here. There's a conditional limit order as well as a conditional market order. I'll actually start out with a conditional limit order here. Now let's come back on over to the chart here and let's imagine that you're looking at this nice hourly uptrend that Bitcoin's had and now seemingly Bitcoin has entered into a little bit of sideways consolidation here. And you're thinking, you know what, this has been in an uptrend, so the most likely outcome here is that continuation at some point will be the name of the game. And here's where you could potentially use a conditional limit order. So first of all, I'll grab a couple horizontals here. I'm gonna stick a horizontal on this wick right here, and then I'll go ahead and stick a horizontal down here just for this demonstration. Let's say you're looking at these two levels here, and you're thinking to yourself, if price action gets above this first horizontal and manages to come up and touch this next horizontal, that's likely the signal to get long. So what you could do is you could set your trigger up at that top horizontal at 56,303. To do that, you come over here and you type that in. So 56,303. Then you can set it so that you have a limit order down at the first horizontal of 55,957. So you come back over here to limit price and you type that in. So 55,957. And then you click on set by stop. Confirm. Now we've placed the conditional limit order. So what we would need price action to do here is we'd need it to get up and tag that top horizontal. That's going to trigger a limit order to be placed on the order book at 55,957, which is the horizontal down below. So you'll, not only will you need price action to get up and hit that top horizontal, but then you'll need price action to retrace down to this horizontal to fill that limit order. And then you'd be looking for continuation to the upside. Now the obvious downside to this is if price action gets up to this level and just shreds right through there. Your limit order gets placed on the order book, but it never fills because price action doesn't retrace down to this level here. So if you're really confident that price action is going to just keep on going, that's when you could consider a conditional market order. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this out here. And let's imagine that you're thinking to yourself, if price action gets through this first horizontal here, and manages to get up to the second horizontal, then price action is likely just going to keep going. So what you could do is you could come over here, click on conditional market order, and now the trigger price of 56,303 is also going to be your entry price. So you just go ahead and click set buy stop, confirm. Now you've placed a conditional market order at the top horizontal. So if price action just blasts right on through there, it's going to fill you at the best available price near this horizontal of 56,303, and then you'll be filled to the upside. Now the obvious downside here is, is if price action gets up there, fills that order, and then retraces, obviously that'd put you in a losing position. So you'd wanna be quite confident that price action is going to just keep on going. Now I'll show you one more example as to where a conditional market order may be useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this out here. And I'm gonna add a couple more horizontals to the charts. So let's go ahead and toss one on right here. And then why not use this wick down here just for fun. Now let's imagine you're looking at this range and you're just not sure which way price action is going to break, but you wanna be able to catch the move when it does happen. So what you could do here is place a conditional market order on either side of this range. So once again, you can use this top horizontal to the upside at 56,303. Come over here, you'd type that into the trigger price, click on set by stop, click confirm. Now you've got that market order to the upside covered. Now you can do the same to the downside. You could be looking at this horizontal right here and, and thinking to yourself, well, if price action starts to get through that first horizontal, and gets down to the second horizontal, then I wanna be filled in a short position. So then you'd come back over here to trigger price and you'd type that in. So the downside would be 53,359.5, type that in. Now you'd click on set sell stop, click confirm. Now you have a conditional market order to fill to the downside if this range happens to break down. Now it doesn't matter which way this range breaks, you'll be filled into the position either way. 
Now, the obvious downsides to this is, is if price action reaches one of these levels, tags you into a trade, and then re-enters the range. So there's always another side to these ideas to consider before placing your conditional order. Now, if the range does break one way or the other, make sure to come back and cancel the order that didn't fill. So if price action rips to the upside here, come back and cancel your conditional order to the downside. And if price action waterfalls to the downside, you'd want to come back and cancel your conditional long order to the upside. Of course, use your own creativity and technical analysis to come up with ideas as to where a conditional order might serve you. They work pretty good on pennant formations as well. But in this video, I wanted to cover the mechanics as well as share a few ideas to help make sense of how these work. Thanks so much for stopping by and checking out this video. Hopefully you found that helpful. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. And until I do, have yourself a powerful day.